So team, keep it clean. Um, as you all know, my hair, it had been getting a little bit longer than usual. Uh, then I finally cut it. So it was a real drastic change. So with the AC, the AC is at the same that it always is at. But I feel it a little more now. So I had to put on a hoodie. But anyway, I love y'all and welcome to October. Uh, September was a great month. Um, not only because football is officially back, um, but, but just from seeing the support that y'all showed uh, in the month of September, it, mean, it means a lot. Um, it meant a lot. Uh, and it was just, it, it's always crazy to see uh, how people who, um, it's, it's like weird because you you don't know them, but you feel like you know them. And it's just like, it, it's just, it's, it's crazy to see people from uh, all across the world, really. Uh, just show a whole lot of love, consistent love, consistent support. Um, it, it's it's really, really, really appreciated. Uh, so thank you all for that. Uh, shout out to the, the the newest Team Keep It Clean channel member, um, that being Rave Kingdom. Uh, and I know Rave Kingdom, uh, they be sending a lot of questions from sub, so I appreciate you. Um, and like we mentioned the other day, but they didn't have a, an, an official uh, formal um, shout out. Uh, to to my guy King Lou, uh, and then Flex Gambino, who again, like I said, he decided, you know what, I'm showing double support. I'm gonna become a channel member and a Team Keep It Clean patron. Uh, so I appreciate y'all. I really do. I, I really do a lot, man. Um, again, we in October now. It's a new month. Um, Football season has been going crazy, as y'all already know. Uh, but y'all support has been going even crazier than football season. So I appreciate it. Um, we got some great questions, like we always do. To start us off, though, um, let, let, let's take a little, a little dive um, into the safe. And another word for the safe is the vault. Uh, first question came from the solutions for kicks. He said, what's up, engraving first? Things first. Oh, I thought he was about to start saying a, a biggie verse for a second. Anyway, he said, first things first. My apologies for mentioning a mythical Ravens wide receiver as Williams, as I meant to type Robinson. Oh, okay, so he talking about a question from Subs from like a week or two ago uh, when he talked about some wide receiver whose last name was Williams. Um, but we, we, had understand, we had understood what you meant, so it's all good, man. Uh, he said, well, our safety Williams is also catching a lot of passes as well. Hey, that, maybe that's why you got it mixed up. Maybe that's why. So, hey, no problem, no worries, it's all good. He said, Greg Roman mentioned his mythical vault in a presser a while ago, but we never saw what those vaulted plays were last season. Maybe because Lamar was injured. Maybe because Giro was bluffing for the media and fans. Or maybe because the offensive line wasn't what they were hoping it would be. We'll, nev we'll never know. We'll never know. Maybe because of the injuries. Hey, we'll never know. But anyway, and, and I, I wonder if it was one of those things... I don't, not that it should have been, um, but then you got to think about injuries and stuff. Maybe it could have been one of those things where um, from the top, maybe Harbaugh was like, hey, whatever you got in the vault, just keep it. Keep it there. Um, we, we we too banged up to really do anything this year. Just just keep it to yourself. Nah, he ain't say that. But anyway, uh, next question came from um, the Solution for Kicks. He said... Uh, through three games, which isn't a big enough sample slice to determine, but it appears not. Giro's vault that's be, that's been open is actually Keith Williams, being their pass game specialist, implementing some non JV squad pass plays. Word to Steve Smith and concepts into the offense. No one saw Devin Big play Duvernay's emergence as a true wide receiver. Yes, your beloved Jet Sweep King actually appears to be a vital piece of the offense we never saw coming. Uh, teams were planning for Andrews, Bateman, and possibly likely, but never thought Duve would become wide receiver two and become such a weapon. Lamar did say in a preseason presser, we have our number two wide receiver now, but he never said who. Oh, he did say that? I don't even remember that. Uh, he said they pretty much slid past everyone, and now it appears it's Devin Duvernay. Uh, what are your thoughts? Keep dropping that amazing content for devout Ravens fans from Baltimore, but living in C San Antonio among these delusional Cowboys fans. LOL. Hey, there's some delusional Ravens fans out there too. Now, don't don't let it fool you. But anyway, um, wow. So, you know, uh, was that who, you who I talked to on Instagram? Cause it's funny. Somebody was um about G Rose Vault. Um, somebody had uh I was talking to him the other day, 
And they were like, they, they said that they don't think that is him even calling the place. I said, oof. <laughs> Yikes. But um, what, whoever it is called the place, if it's G Row, if it's Keith Whit, whatever, um, it, it's been it's been good for the wide receivers. Now, um, as good as it's been, it could still be better. And it's crazy because they've um even amongst the success, you see some some same hiccups that have been there uh in in the past. Um, like for instance, on Josh Oliver, on his touchdown, first touchdown in his career, shout out to Josh Oliver. On Josh Oliver's touchdown, um, him and Mark Andrews, they had to like ah, they had to like fake out each other. Because they were getting ready to run right into each other on that touchdown play. And I hadn't even seen that. Somebody had actually pointed that out to me. I, cause I, I, or maybe they just put it on Twitter or something. Cause, but I, I, I didn't see that. I didn't see it live. I didn't even notice it in the replay. But somebody pointed that out. I was like, oh, whoa, whoa, yikes. But they made it happen. And then um, it, it was talked about how with Lamar, that, that, that play just really showed uh, his continued emergence as that dude. Um, because... The timing of that throw and the placement of the ball, uh, it had to be perfect. But anyway, we ain't talking about Lamar. This is about Giro right now. Um, and then um, the interception in the the Patriots game um, where Rashad Bateman was coming across the field and DuVernay was going up the field. And they um, Lamar threw it. it, looked, it I think, I'm pretty sure it was intended for Rashad Bateman. Um, but his guy was close. His, the guy who was covering Rashad Bateman was close enough to be able to drop off. A, I mean, excuse me. No, no, no. The guy who was co covering Devin Duvernay was close enough because Rashad Bateman and Devin Duvernay was still in somewhat in the same area. The cornerback covering Duvernay was able to drop off a of Duvernay um, and jump that route, jump Rashad Bateman's route because they were right there together. So, I mean, so again, you, you, you see some of the same issues that a lot of people have talked about. As far as the receivers still being uh, in the same area. Um, but, see, the thing about that is... Uh, hmm. I want to say, like, obviously the Ravens passing offense has had a lot of success this year. Um, and that's a beautiful thing. But there's still room for improvement. And there's still room for them to grow. There's still room for them to take it to another level. So when you think about that, that's a beautiful thing. It's like it's not it's 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 kind of a beautiful thing, depending on how what side of the what side of the fence you're looking at. If you're looking at a glass full, glass half empty, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but it's it's nice to know that, like Lamar Jackson said, they haven't peaked. Team, keep it clean. Welcome to another episode of Questions from Subs. If you ever was wondering how you can be part of Questions from Subs, just go to the description box. Next question came from my guy, one of the newest channel members, Rave Kingdom. He said, J.K. Dobbins was a breath of fresh air to our run game. The Ravens have already been looking on, uh, looking good in a passing game. Does this make the Ravens more complete on offense? Well, while he was a breath of fresh air, um, Ravens run offense was still suffocating. So it's a start, but it's not a finish. Next two questions came from my guy Jarvo. He said, hope all is well with you and the fam, especially with the storm. I don't know if this question was asked or not, but if you could assemble the perfect Ravens team, what would your roster look like? Choose a Ravens defensive era, Ravens offensive era, and the Ravens special teams era. I will allow you to swap out a player from that era with another Ravens player to your liking. May God bless you, the family, uh, and your page as well as subscribers. Appreciate that. Um, give me 2,000 Ravens defense, because <laughs> they ain't let nothing happen. And give me um, 2019 regular season offense, because they will lighten it up. And you put the two together, and what do you got? Hopefully in the playoffs, you could actually advance. Uh, but <laughs> I, don't give me 2019 uh, playoff offense. Don't give me that. Give me 2019 regular season offense, and give me that. 
that regular season offense throughout. And I think I would be good to go. His other question was with the season ending injury with the, ah, with the season ending injury to Michael Pierce, should we give Big Brandon Williams a call? They could. They could. Um they could. He could help with the run defense a little bit, even though his run defense was it was lacking a little bit last year. Um, but hey, maybe it was because the just the Ravens as a whole were lacking last year. But they could. I, I would rather sue. And I think that with the Ravens, now that I think about it, I don't really think they would give Brandon Williams a call because the Ravens, the way that they've been moving, and we said this a couple years ago, um, it seems that they just are continuously trying to get more athletic up front. With guys that can do both, guys that can stop the run, and guys that can uh, rush the passer to provide some interior pressure. The interior pressure part ain't been going so good so far, um, but hopefully, <laughs> hopefully that changes soon. Huge Ravens issue. Next question, Kevin. Ah, next question came from my guy Kevin. I'm over here thinking and talking and reading at the same time, and it just ain't working. Anyway, he said, Angry Raven, I've sent you emails in the past about other issues way less serious than this. After talking to my brother, we're both from Louisville and have been following Lamar for years, I want to apologize to you because the Ravens should have gotten Lamar a super true number one wide receiver and anything else he needed to win them at least three to four Super Bowls in the next seven to eight years. Hmm. Well, I feel like you're about to hit me with a swerve. Because I, cause I, I know you've been very adamant about the Ravens got enough at wide receiver for a long time. Something smells fishy about this, Kevin. And I'm going to get down to the bottom of it, buddy. Let's see what you're talking about. He said, imagine this. Michael Jordan before Scotty and Rodman. LeBron James, first time in Cleveland with nobody. Barry Sanders and nobody. My favorite player, Dan Marino and nobody. I hate to say it, but the Ravens are truly wasting what could be the most dynamic player and QB we've ever seen. I'm hurt to acknowledge this. The NFL is truly a business and it's sad. Think of the re records Lamar could set even more if the Ravens went all in on getting him more weapons. Not just a Tyreek Hill or DK Metcalf or a Debo. Why not draft more quality running backs in higher rounds instead of no impact DBs or pass rushers like, oh wait, shaking my head. This is a, this is truly a Ravens issue. Whoa. Whoa, let me find out you turning heel, Kevin. Um, whoa, you 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 went deep. Um, now that part right there, uh, as far as the quality of weapons, um, yeah, that's a Ravens issue. It's a philosophy type of thing. Uh, they've never been a team to really like invest in receivers like that in more ways than one. Uh, as far as paying premium for wide receivers, they're not gonna do that. They haven't done that like ever. Um, as far as uh, drafting uh, with wide receivers, um, they've as far as first round guys, they do it every once in a while. Obviously, Bateman, uh, Hollywood, Rashad Perryman, yo, um, Mark Clayton, Travis Taylor. Uh, am I missing anybody, or is that everybody? Uh, as far as first round guys I'm talking about. I know there's been a couple of second like Tory Smith, he's a second round pick. Um so I don't know. Uh, but with with Ravens in, in, in the wide receiver position, um, they also haven't really put they they never really used to put more much emphasis on development either. So man, that was for whatever round the guys were drafted in. Um so that that that's been an issue too. But it seems as if uh, Eric DeCosta is trying to sort of slowly turn the page on that uh, as he, throughout his tenure as GM. Uh, so that's a good sign. I and mean, then especially with what we've been seeing this year, uh, the Ravens are really, um, they're really settling down on, hey, we're we rocking with what we got. We're rocking with our guys. Um, and so far it's been so good. Uh, we do want to see them involved more, um, but they've been off to a, a, a pretty good start. Um, but we do want to see them involved more. Uh, because it's like their the opportunities have been far and few, and they've mo they've made the most of them for the most part. Because um, we know obviously it's been a lot of Mark Andrews, Mark Andrews, Mark Andrews every game. Um, but we it would be nice to see some more do Devin Duvernay, see some more Rashad Bateman, see some more targets go their way. But we know um, Ravens' offense is a very efficient offense. It's not really based off of volume like that. It's based off of efficiency. Um, at least that's that's what it seems. And I mean that's what it's been in the past too, as far as the passing game. Um but you want guys to make the most of it. But as far as uh your other points about 
with Lamar Jackson and uh, them wasting his talent and uh, not even wasting it, but not maximizing it. Yeah, I mean, that's what it's been. I don't really, uh, we, we talked about that a lot um, over this summer, really over the past couple of years. But because uh, every offseason we would hope, all right, this whole, hopefully this will be the offseason at the Ravens. They do that move or those moves and they really like, do. And, and again, last last season, I had liked the moves that they did. At wide receiver, I, I like their setup at wide receiver last season. Um, with Hollywood with Bateman uh, and, and with Sammy Watkins, um, but they just they were never all healthy at the same time. Um, so that just that that, that killed that. But I, I had I had loved that setup. That was probably my favorite setup um, for Lamar Jackson. Uh, yeah. So, but we we never got to see it. We never got to see it to the full because they were never all three healthy together. So, um, next year is going to be fun. This this upcoming off season, it's going to be fun. It's going to be very interesting to see uh, what happens and what doesn't happen, um, especially when it comes to uh, Lamar's decision. Next question came from my guy Juan. He said, "Ronnie Stanley, uncertainty." Hello, and Graven. I hope you are safe and doing well right now. Now, here's my take on the Ronnie Stanley situation. Let me know if you agree with me or, or your overall thoughts. I think this team needs to either trade for a premier left tackle. Or draft one in the first round. Uh, whether or not Ronnie Stanley works out long term for us, I think we cannot put all our eggs into one basket with him. Like your sayings go, anything we get from from him is a bonus. And so stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. Uh, this would allow Ronnie Stanley to take his time recovering if he is ever 100%. And if at all. I'm not usually a negative type, but week one at Las Vegas last season made me realize this might be bad news for him. And I just want to keep uh, Lamar Jackson safe in the pocket. <laughs> your thoughts. Hey, that, that, that little last part, that was real right there, baby. Um, with Ronnie Stanley, I mean, it's a waiting game. That's all it is. It's, it's a waiting game, but it's one of those waiting games where um, you just, the the money is, is, I think the money is one of the biggest things. That That's one of the biggest reasons that so many Ravens fans are, are just so worried about the whole situation. It's because of all the money that's invested in him. Um, and that, that makes the situation that much harder for, all, for the Ravens, the, them as an organization, too. Because you got, this is a franchise left tackle. He's making franchise tackle money. Um, but he hasn't played. But he did have, what, two surgeries last all, last year? Um, he said two. So the ankle surgery and some other lower body major surgery. I'm not sure what it was. But um, I know that's, it, it's, it, it's frustrating for people. Even even with that new information that, that they got the other day. Um because it's like then 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 with your with your scenario you draft the left tackle um in the first round it's like all right you drafted a guy and then what if Ronnie Stanley's healthy well you could move him to right tackle uh you could put him at guard so that they could be that's not like the guy would go to waste um but then uh if you trade for a premier left tackle um are they on their second contract already and even if they are, that could be a lot of money to, to take on if that's a premier left tackle that's, that's really good. Um, then, again, I mean, it, I guess it would be the same thing. Uh, but it would be like you paying two, two left tackle money. You know, Ravens Rave don't want to do that. They don't want to do that. That's why we all knew. I mean, I thought it was clear as day um, when, that, when they paid Ronnie Stanley that they were not going to pay Orlando Brown Jr. too. Um, so I just feel like that... If they were to do that, I feel like they would definitely draft one before they even traded for one, just because of the money issue right there. Um, and if they drafted one, that would give them time uh, with Ronnie Stanley to really uh, be able to get through his contract and get to that point where if they wanted to, they could cut ties with little uh, negative financial impact. Next question came from Daryl. He said, oh, no question, but I just want to say I appreciate the transparencies week to week. I'm a new subscriber and I enjoy him. Last week hurt, but it's a long season. <laughs> Go Raven. Hey, appreciate it, Daryl. Thank you, man. What is our front office doing? Next question came from my guy Palmer. He said, Ain Graven, long time viewer, first time email submission. Been a Ravens fan since 2000, so I've seen the highs and lows of our organization. A few days ago, we just signed JPP. As I look through all the comments from Ravens fans, jumping for joy, I'm kind of saddened that we are pumped for a 33-year-old edge player who's definitely past his prime and who wasn't even on a roster this season. Hey, that's me. 
That's me. I am who you described. And it's funny because I, I, I talked about this in a video because it, it's kind of scary. It's kind of scary that um, that that's that's where Ravens pass rush is. That's that that's the point that Ravens pass rush is at. Where hey, it's like, hey, we signed JPP. Let's go. But our pass rush been rough because we, we just we're hoping that he ends up being Superman. We're hoping that he goes off. We're hoping that he goes out there and crushes it. But that's that's the, the status of Ravens pass rush right now. So I know they're hoping like, all right, JPP, get us through this Bills game. Then we'll probably get Bowser back right after. Um, Ajabo, who knows when. But Bowser for now. And hopefully Justin Houston, could, the, the groin injury that will most likely keep him out of this Bills game, hopefully that will be all good to go afterwards, even though those things can be tricky. But anyway. He said, I know we build through the draft and free agency is always right player, right price, but I'm beginning to seriously question our front office. We have a combined four players out of 20 drafted from our 2018 and 19 drafts on our roster. That's not building through the draft at all. We are repeatedly drafting the same positions over and over in an endless cycle. Mm. Then when we do score, uh, we've scored twice on edge with Darius Smith and Judon. We let them go to other teams just to have to rebuild all over again at that position. Judon would have been a better player for us if we use him correctly. See, that one, um, I, I think with Ravens, their their strategy and their thinking with those two, like Judon was a fifth-round pick. So Darius Smith, I believe he was a fifth-round pick as well. So since they hit on both of those fifth-round picks, I, I think Ravens felt like, hey, we, we could just get another fifth-round pick pass rusher. We, we, we done this, baby. We do this. And yeah, you've seen the results. Anyway, uh, we got Zyla last year in free agency and Marcus Williams this year. And lo and behold, they are great additions to our team with immediate impact. Who would have thought? I hit a sarcasm. Uh, when we continue to see immediate impact from free agents on our team, why don't we continue on that thought process? Why are we always in a building situation versus a win now situation? Mm. Oof. Oof, oof, oof. Hold up now. I might have to take off this hoodie because it's getting a little hot. Buffalo didn't need Von Miller, but got the man anyway. Man, see, this Buffalo, I, and I always, always got to give praise to Buffalo with how they build not only their offense for Josh Allen, but their roster. Because they always show they are trying to win right here, right now, and they don't stop. Anyway, he said, Dolphins drafted Waddle and still got healed. They had questions about their young quarterback. And they're making sure they get all the answers. Now, that the whole concussion. Ooh, yeah. Anyway, um, Eagles drafted Smith and got A.J. Brown. Questions about their young quarterback, and they're trying to get some answers. Chargers added more uh, via free agency. Yeah, they, um, they had both already. They went out and got Khalil Mack, too. They went out and got uh, J.C. Jackson, too. They were like, man, hey. Uh, they were like, Herbert, we, we love Herbert. We love what he can do, but... Um, our defense, our defense ain't stopping nobody. So what they go, they went out and got some playmakers on defense. Who would have thought? Anyway, he said, um, and the Rams won the Super Bowl via trades and free agency. Oh yeah, you, you know Rams. We aren't arming up during free agency. We band aid. Um, Marcus Williams, he was an arm up. Uh, Michael Pierce, I would say he was too. Um, Morgan Moses, I think that was um. That was a solid move. Uh, it was a, um, I feel like that's sort of a, uh, a like, all right, you, you you hold it down for now until we really figure out the future there. Um, Pat Ricard, that was a carryover because he was obviously here last season. Um, Demarcus Robinson, that was a, ooh, that was a last last minute type of thing. And it's, 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 going, on, it's going all right so far. Um, who else? What am I missing? I can't think of anybody else, but I I, I, I I get what you're saying. He said, I've never really thought about it until now, but how are we a drafting first team, yet we don't have any cap space year in and year out? And how are we so fiscally conservative, yet we never seem to have any money? Well, they they do pay their own guys. Like, they pay Marcus Peters. They pay Marlon Humphrey. Uh, they paid Mark Andrews. They pay Ronnie Stanley. Um, they gave Gus a contract extension. It, it, it wasn't really like getting paid. It was a raise, but 
Uh, yeah, I don't even feel like getting into the whole business thing with the Gus Edwards because they 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 did that Gus Edwards thing kind of like you, that was very uh, not nasty, but just um, I feel like they 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 held him down as far as numbers so they could hold him down as far as numbers were for his second contract because there was times where Gus would be going off and the Ravens would be like, oh nope, next next running back, next running back, and it's like they didn't want to showcase Gus or let Gus like really eat like that. Cause he was, Gus was doing his thing from jump, um, but they would always move on to somebody else, and not really let him continue to get hot like that. Um, so come contract time, they like, hey, you was an undrafted rookie free agent. Uh, look at your numbers. Look at what you've done for us. And depending on who you are, it can be hard to argue the numbers, man. But anyway, um, but yeah, they 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 pay their guys. They pay a lot of their own guys. Um, and then, oh, Nick Boyle, he got paid too. You mentioned Kevin Zeitler. He was another one that got paid too. Um, but that was free agency. We were talking about their own guys. But, yeah, Nick Boyle, uh, they gave Patrick Ricard. Uh, he got a second contract. And, uh, oh, Justin Tucker, he was another one that got paid. Um, but they, they pay a lot of their own guys. Then they have, like, other guys who I think for the uh, – What's a good word to explain it? I feel like guys who are not necessarily their premier guys, that's where it can get a little tricky uh, 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 as far as where you're allocating your money. Um, So, yeah. but So, it's... Anyway. He said, we got to pay Lamar, but if and when we do, I'm afraid we will go back to the Flacco days and not have any talent around him in the locker room. What significant talent do they put around him now that they would, w- 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 that they would lose if they pay Lamar? Think about it. Mark Andrews already under contract. Who would they lose if they paid Lamar? Rashad Bateman's in the second year of his rookie deal. He'll he'll be going into if they if they can come to an agreement with Lamar next year, but this coming off season, Rashad Bateman will be going into the third year of his rookie deal. Demarcus Robinson on a one year deal. Uh, Devin Duvernay will be going into his fourth year. James Prochet will be going into his fourth. Year. Well, no, 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 no. They got drafted twenty twenty. So they will be going into their third years. So yeah, well, no, they be going into their fourth years. 2020, 2020, 2020, 2021, 2022, yeah. They will be going into their fourth years, both of them. Ooh, I had to say that out loud for a second. Because I'm like, but Bateman is in his second year. Those dudes ain't in their second years. Um, Tyler Wallace will be going into his, second, his third year, excuse me. Um... Isaiah Likely would be going into his second. Charlie uh, Cola would be going into his set. So, who are you gonna lose? What what, what elite offensive talent are you gonna lose? Even on the defensive side of the ball, like so. I I, I just I want to see them really losing. I think Marcus Peters, and I think that's whether they pay Lamar or not. But I think Marcus Peters is is, is a possibility. I think everything depends on this year, though, how he does this year. If they decide they want to keep him, or they decide, you know what, this will be the last year of his deal. I think that's a big uh, if right there. Um, but anyway, uh, he said, uh, why are we acting like a farm team letting, <laughs> letting good drafted players go? I know you can't keep them all, but come on, man. Sorry for the long message. Figured out, make my first email a good one. Thank you for your hard work. No, I appreciate it. This was a fun one to go over um, because, yeah, you, you took a, a deep dive into the philosophy, into the philosophy. And, um, it's one of those things where it's like, hey, um, we just got to wait it out and see, man. We got to wait it out and see. As far as the drafts and stuff, yeah, the drafts uh, and, the, and the lack of players that they have remaining from those drafts, it's been something. It has it has certainly been something that uh, I think is important to keep an eye on and to have kept an eye on um, because, like you mentioned, a lot of those guys are gone. A lot of those guys just don't pay. And we know the draft is – a gamble, it's a risk, but the uh, Ravens been losing out a lot more than they have been winning when it comes to the draft. Um, this year still to be determined, obviously, but past drafts got a lot of guys that just it ain't it ain't been happening, man. Now uh, from the twenty twenty draft, it's seeming like all right, some of these guys might be turning the corner. Like again, Devin Duvernay we talked about him. Um, was Matabike? I think Matabike was the, the 2020 draft as well. 
We'll see about Pro Shea. Um, Patrick Queen, still working, still working on some stuff. Um, I don't remember everybody else off the top of my head, but it's it's just it's, it's been crazy, man. Um, and it's it's something that again I we've been talking about on here uh, 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 an update to the philosophy. And the philosophy is not just what we be talking about on offense. It's just philosophy in general, man. Just with the whole team. It just, they need some serious, they, I feel like they need to, to take a serious look and some serious looks in the mirror. Um, because they obviously are a very well-respected franchise. They, they are. Anytime you talk to fans of other teams and they talk about the Ravens franchise, they say, oh, they are so well-respected. They're so well-run. And I, I just, I, I don't, I, I wouldn't want Ravens to like sort of, Get big headed and get um get like hey well hey we've been doing this thing for a long time people respect us around here they always say how well run of an organization we are um so we don't need to fix anything we're good we don't need to change anything we don't need to upgrade anything what we do the way we do it is good I wouldn't want them to just get lax like that cause in whatever you do. I think you should always be looking for improvements. I think you should always be looking for ways to get better. But anyway, so good questions. Great stuff to uh, to think about as far as the front office. I know my guy um, Kevin, in his question, um, he was sort of alluding to some of the same stuff, but more so him, he was talking about on the offensive side of the ball. Um, but, yeah, you took it to, 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 to the whole – all both sides of the ball. So, um, yeah, man, it's – is, we just gotta wait it out. Next question came from Oreo Cookie. He said, "Ain't Graven, me being only sixteen, I, I years old, I only know bad Joe Flacco." <laughs> he said, I, "I only know bad Joe Flacco and Lamar. I was six when they won the Super Bowl. I would like to know what uh, what was it like in your eyes to win the Super Bowl? Oh, and one more thing: cold weather is so much better than warm weather. And as uh, as typical, have a good rest of your day. Whoa, hold up now." You uh, you 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 talking crazy now? Cold weather is better than warm weather. No, are you crazy, man? Walking around in hoodies all day when it's cold, nobody. Anyway, um, when in the Super Bowl, that was uh, it was just a crazy experience because you got to think about the years prior. Um, they drafted Joe Flacco. Um, and there was this, he was this quarterback. He looked like uh, Bert from Sesame Street, um, and he uh, was a very quiet guy, uh, just very, I don't want to say timid, but it's Flacco was just Flacco, man. Um, the Ravens really wanted Matt Ryan, uh, but they couldn't get him, but they drafted Flacco, I think number 18 overall in the 20, 2008 draft, um, but they got him. He wasn't even supposed to start. Uh, I think Troy Smith was supposed to start, but he had got like tonsillitis, so they say he lost a bunch of weight. Um, then Steve McNair, I think, I think he had an injury. Maybe they had Steve McNair, Joe Flacco rookie. Something happened with Steve McNair. I think, I think he got an injury. But either way, um, Flacco ended up starting. He wasn't supposed to start week one. He ended up starting week one, and I always remember that. I think it was a 56-yard touchdown run. That was his first touchdown. I don't think he threw his first touchdown. I think his first touchdown that he threw was to Daniel Wilcox against the Steelers. I think it was like a two-yard touchdown or something like that, I think. Um, anybody correct me if I'm wrong, please do. But Flacco, that first touchdown, uh, where he ran for like 56 yards or 48 yards, something like that. I think it was 56 yards. Have a long, it was a long run, especially for Flacco. But um, I was going crazy. I remember watching a game uh, with my guy. I think it was, uh, I'm pretty sure it was against the Raiders. Oh, no, no, it was against the Bengals. Against the Bengals. Um, I was jumping. I was jumping. I remember the sign in the stands. It said, Wacko for Flacco. I think that was his parents holding it up. Um, but, yeah, it was crazy. And just watching him and really watching the team go through what they went through. Um, first year, his first year. I think they went to the AFC Championship game. And then, um, and like, they, they, they really had some teams, man. They had some squads, man. I and I've, I've actually think 2012, no 2011, that was one of their best teams, man. Then 2012 too, but 2011, oh that that was a squad, man. Um, 
But yeah, just watching them have success in the playoffs every year and then just getting so close. And as a fan, like, that is it was painful, man. Like, them getting so close and then losing. It's like, oh, man. Because you think about all the what ifs, what could have been, how come it wasn't, why didn't it go down, what happened. It was pain. Um, so then that made that, and then the Ray Lewis speech in 2011. Oof, man. I remember watching that so many times and just crying, crying, crying. Like, really, like crying. Um, because it was, so, it was so painful, man. I was like, oh, man. I was like crying, man. Um, and then uh, it just made 2012 just that much better because they finished. They finished. They finished what they started. And 2011, that was the closest that they had ever gotten. Obviously, minus 2,000, but this the current team under Harbaugh, under Flacco, uh, under this new Ray Lewis Avery. But that was the closest that they ever got it was a, a 2,000 left. They, they, they were so close. They uh, were a kick away from going in overtime in the AFC Championship game to get to the Super Bowl. And Billy kind of missed it. Why left? Um, so then the following year with them winning... It was just crazy, and they uh, and the way that they won, they beat the they beat the current, the future, and the past. Um, they beat the uh, the future it was well, we thought it was the future, Andrew Luck. Um, the past that they beat uh, was Peyton Manning, um, and the current that they beat was uh, Tom Brady. And I guess you could say Peyton Manning was current too, because he. Him and the Broncos won the Super Bowl, I think, the two years after that, I think. I don't remember. But anyway. Um so it was just nice, man. It was it was nice. It was it was just crazy just going through that. My my favorite game ever wasn't even the Super Bowl, it was the, the Broncos game. Because I'm just like, man, these Ravens, they they historically have problems with Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning had just whooped them earlier that year. Broncos had, had whooped them earlier that year. And Anquan Bolden was like, well, we're going to see them again. We're going to see them again. Was he just talking? Hey, who knows? Did he know something? Hey, who knows? But the way that they finished after failing the previous year just made the Super Bowl uh, that much sweeter. Um, that was a special year. That was a year I got baptized. That was a year me and my wife got married at that whole Super Bowl season. Um that was her first Ravens game that she had ever been to because uh, we went to um, the Raiders and the Ravens versus Raiders game um, in 2012 that season. And the Ravens were just running up that score, and I loved it. I loved it. Um, so, yeah, man, it was a special year. Very, very special year. Uh, and they did it. They did it. They made it happen. And um, it's something that I won't ever forget. Yeah.